In this video, I am going to show you the good and bad things about the new Sumeru weapons, so you can see for yourself which characters and teams should use these new weapons, and if it's actually worth crafting them. So, let's start with Moonpiercer. Is there anyone actually that can use its power effectively? Well, the first one I had in mind was Toma in a Tomato Burgeon team. The core of this team is Ayato and Toma, hence the word Tomato, as well as off-field Dendro Applicator like the Traveler here, while the last spot can be anybody, but in this case I used Kazuha. Now, a fully refined level 90 Moonpiercer has 110 elemental mastery, and after triggering Dendro-related reaction, the passive will generate a special buff on the ground, and when anybody picks it up, their attack will be increased by 36%, which sounds pretty good, right? In theory, yeah, but the way this buff appears can be annoying sometimes. It can get stuck behind large enemies, you might not see it clearly when a lot of stuff is happening on the screen, or you might just accidentally pick it up with Toma if you're not careful with these movements. And even then, in this team, the character who wants this buff would be Ayato. If he picks it up, he gains about 8% overall damage increase, if we assume he's also fully utilizing Kazuha's buffs. I mean, the damage increase is pretty decent, all things considered especially since you can activate the passive effect off-field, but then we also need to talk about Toma himself. You see, the whole team is entirely made up of different elements. Dendro Traveler, Ayato, and Toma, each of their bursts cost 80, while Kazuha's is 60, so energy recharge is extremely important here, if you effectively want to do a rotation in the Abyss. Now, if you have C4 unlocked on Toma, it does get easier to manage his burst, but even then, getting 110 elemental mastery from this new polearm isn't exactly amazing for him. Obviously, he will be the one triggering Burgeon, so he wants to have as much EM as possible, but at the same time, you also need to balance his energy recharge, otherwise without his burst, you won't create Burgeons consistently. So going for an energy recharge polearm is just far more comfortable choice, especially since you can get a lot of EM from just flower and feather substats. But regardless, if your Toma has no problem with activating the burst off cooldown without an ER weapon, I would say Moonpiercer is pretty decent on him, especially if somebody needs that attack boost. However, as crazy as it sounds, Raiden can actually utilize this weapon pretty decently as well. Now, this isn't going to be your typical Shogun, because we're talking about building a full elemental mastery Raiden, who is going to be triggering hyper blooms for the team. And the reason why Moonpiercer is good for her is that she won't be using her burst at all. I mean, I know this sounds weird, but but it's enough to just use her skill, and it will trigger Hyper Blooms very consistently. And what's even more funny, if you put Beto into the team, her burst won't actually trigger Hyper Blooms. So essentially, the dream of using Raido combination is finally alive. Still, Beto will steal Hyper Blooms with her skill and the initial burst hit, but afterwards, it will be Raiden triggering the rest of the rotation. So, the team I'm using here is Shink Cho, Dendro Traveler, Raiden, and Beto. It's actually a fun comp. Moonpiercer buff can be either picked up by Shink Cho or Beto. Both benefit from the attack increase, although I prefer giving the bonus attack buff to Beto because her burst snapshots. But if you don't like the idea of Beto stealing the occasional Hyper Bloom, you could be like Mr. Zajef77 here and just use Zhongli with Crescent Pike to let Raiden trigger these Hyper Blooms 100% of the time. Overall, I have mixed feelings about this weapon. For Toma, it's clunky to use if you don't solve these ER issues. For Raiden, it's a niche option. You could just also give her Dragon's Bane for double the amount of EM. And while I haven't mentioned her so far, Xiangling has so many better options to go for. It's just not worth building Moonpiercer for her. So I think this weapon right now is just alright, but it's at least fun to use in some weird team comms. Now, the next weapon in this list is Sapwood Blade, and I'll be honest here, I think it's a really solid option for Benny because it provides ER from Substat, although not that much, but it's also got better base attack than Favoni's, Sacrificial, or Festering Desire, so he will end up providing higher attack boost to his teammates. Now, I'm not sure about the passive when using him. He may be able to trigger Burgeon or Burning, but I don't see this as a very effective way of getting that buff, so most of the time, you will be just capitalizing on the raw weapon stats instead, unless you're running some something like the Intergrational team. However, Dendro Traveler absolutely loves this weapon's passive. It's going to be extremely easy to cause one of the Bloom or Quicken reactions with them, and just like Moonpiercer, this buff is also generated on the ground the same way, but instead of giving attack, it provides 120 elemental mastery when fully refined. That's a lot of value, especially considering the first 100 EM on a character is considered to be the best damage increase when causing reactions, while the sweet spot lingers around 300 to 400. But even then, in a Quicken or Bloom team, 
characters like Fischl, Kaching, Tignati, and so on, they will actually benefit quite a lot from this passive buff. And to make things even better, since Dendro Traveler needs to have a lot of energy recharge, Sapwood's substat is just perfect for them. So, in a team with Traveler, Fischl, Kaching, and Tignati, or Animal Unit, basically anyone, even Traveler themselves, can utilize the passive buff. Speaking of which, Kazuha can also equip this weapon, and consistently generate the passive effect from causing aggravates when there are multiple enemies involved, which becomes even more relevant if you don't have your second constellation unlocked, and this can be an alternative way of boosting your teammate's EM. Finally, there's also Xing Cho, although I would say Favonius or Sacrificial is still far more better on him when it comes to managing his ER, although in Raiden National, this can be a decent option for him. But yeah, I would say that all in all, this is probably the best craftable weapon that's worth getting fully refined. There's plenty of characters to use it on, especially if you like the new Dendro Traveler. This is an amazing sword to equip, and I'm really happy we got a good craftable from this update. Just like Sapwood Blade, the new Sumeru craftable Claymore Forest Regalia is very similar to how it works. It provides the same amount of base attack and energy recharge, and the passive effect is also identical. The only difference here is that there's not a lot of Claymore users who can utilize this new weapon. The first one that comes to mind is Beto. It's no secret she has problems with energy recharge, so the substat here helps, the base attack also lets her burst hit harder for chain lightning damage, and in quicken teams, that leaf with 120 EM can be utilized by base basically anyone, including herself. I mean, in a team with Kale, Fischl, Sucrose, and Beto, Forest Regalia worked like a charm. I didn't bother too much focusing on who should get the passive buff, because if they did, well, it benefited them for that period of time after unloading their kit. Now, you could say Sayu and Aggravate could also potentially use this weapon, but I honestly didn't find much success, since without any grouping from her, it's hard to trigger Aggravates consistently. But maybe I'm just a terrible Sayu player, who knows. However, Dory is coming out pretty soon. And from the way her talents were showcased in the livestream, it looks like this Claymore will at least be an option worth the consideration, especially if she has high burst cost. So, yeah, I think that while Forest Regalia is not as great as Sapwood Blade, I think it's still the second best weapon you can craft from the entire Sumeru series, and I believe it will hold its value when new future characters get released. So, King Squire is essentially Tignati's free-to-play bow, but I would argue that because of the way the passive works, it's not going to be as valuable as other free-to-play options. See, the thing is, almost all of these weapons have 20 second cooldown on their passives, and for Tignari, it's a bit of a deal-breaker. His burst has low cost and his cooldowns are pretty fast. The time I spend using him usually doesn't have 20 second rotations, so this means he will not get this passive buff consistently. Now, the buff is pretty great, don't get me wrong, fully refined and after using skill or burst, the bow user gets 140 elemental mastery, which is pretty awesome when paired with attack substat, but even then, something like slingshot can outperform this weapon, even if the cluster blooms will always get minus 10% damage increase. I just don't think it's worth giving up all the ores for this bow, when there are better options, options like prototype crescent or hamayumi. Oh, and maybe you're wondering, what about Fischl? She could use this bow, right? Well, not really. This EM buff only stays on the character if they are on the field. The moment you switch them out, they all also lose the buff, and considering Fischl barely stays on the field, it's just not a great option for her. So overall, I think this craftable bow at least right now is an easy skip, but if you do have it, and you also have Tignari and no other weapon options as of now, it's not a bad weapon by any means, and you can still use it, until you decide to get something better. The final, craftable Sumeru weapon is the Catalyst, Fruit of Fulfillment. Now, it actually gives decent amount of ER from substat, but the passive is kinda weird. By triggering reactions, you can build up 24 EM at first refinement, up to 5 times for a total of 120 elemental mastery, or 180 elemental mastery at full refinement, but in exchange, you're losing 5% attack for a total of 25%. You'd be surprised, but I don't think the loss of attack is that big of a deal. The 3 characters that I believe who can utilize this Catalyst is Yaimiko, Lisa, and Sucrose. All of them would want to ideally be used in quicken teams to get the best value out of this weapon, but the buildup is pretty slow, and there are just so many better options to go for, like the classical Thrilling Tales, Sacrificial Fragments, and many more. Catalyst weapons in general are very competitive, so I would be lying to you if I told you this is a great investment. Although, with all things considered, I kinda like using it on Lisa, especially since her burst is so expensive, and that extra EM is great for aggravate damage. But 
But all in all, when considering all of the new Sumeru craftable weapons, Moonpiercer can be used in fun but niche teams. It's not amazing, but it's also not that bad, so it can serve its purpose with that attack boost for teammates. However, I highly recommend getting Sapwood Blade fully refined. It works on so many great meta units, especially if you didn't get lucky with the swords from the gacha pulls. On the other hand, Forest Regalia is very similar to the sword, but there's just less characters who can utilize this claymore, even if it is really great. So you could also craft it for someone like Beto or Dory, but only assuming if her burst will be expensive. Then there's King Squire and Fruit of Fulfillment. I don't know, I just don't think it's worth spending your time getting these weapons if you're a veteran player. You probably have something better lying around in your inventory. Otherwise, sure, King Squire works decently on Tignari, and the Fruit is a nice equip for Elisa, Yaimiko, or Sucrose. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I didn't want to just read off the text of these weapons, and instead I spent a lot of time crafting each and one of them, so I can give you my full honest opinion, because I really wanted to test these weapons in actual combat, so you can see for yourself how good they are. As always, I appreciate your support, you can help me out by subscribing to my channel and leaving a like on the video. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.